To security matters now, six notorious bandits have laid down their arms to embrace the peace initiative by the Zamfara state government. The bandits promised to shun crime after taking an oath with the Holy Quran before Governor Belo Matawale and other stakeholders at the government house in Guso, the state capital. The governor added that the fight against insecurity is a collective effort so residents can support the initiatives by giving the necessary information to security operators. In Kaduna State, Governor Nasser El Rufai is insisting that his administration is at war with the bandits and will never negotiate with them. While the Chief of Air Staff, Air Vice Marshal Oladayo Amau, is seeking new ways of doing things in order to achieve a better and lasting result in the fight against insurgency. Now, joining us to discuss possible ways of ending security challenges across the country is Mr. Dixon Osage. He's a security consultant. A pleasure having you with us Thank on the you. program. Thank you, Melinda. Nice yeah. being here. Now, yesterday, six notorious bandits in Zamfara State laid down their arms. They accepted the peace initiative offered by Governor Matawale. Now, do you think this is the way to go, this kind of peace initiative? Uh, for me, I, I'm looking at it from my own point of view that um, what we have been doing all this while is that we are certifying crime, you know. Uh, when uh, criminal elements uh, go into an act of, go into a devilish act, and uh, at the end of the day, they are being given uh, amnesty, uh, is, is way to tell you and I that the government are certifying criminality. Uh, before you bargain with the devil, bargaining with the devil comes with two consequences, emotional entrapment and psychological trap. Uh, I am not against people surrendering their weapons, but what are the cause, uh, root cause analysis of uh, uh, the incident in, in Zamfara State? Uh, having known the root cause analysis, uh, these guys that are surrendering their uh, weapons, are they truly repented? Uh, if they are truly repented, uh, what information are they giving to the state? Where are they getting the weapons from? Uh, who are the people weaponizing them? Uh, who are the conflict entrepreneurs? And who are the conflict distributors? Uh, it's not all about them surrendering their arms and ammunition. Uh, it's all about having a holistic uh, neutralization of this uh, criminal element. Because when we go into the DDR uh, mechanism, uh, they need to be well demobilized. They need to be um, uh, de-radicalized and rehabilitated. You know, they need to be rehabilitated into the society, uh, looking at their uh, psychological evaluation. Because uh, for these guys to come on board and you know exhume human lives, as of 2018, over 5,000 lives uh, paved way uh, due to these criminal activities. 70 billion uh, naira has been spent on these criminal activities. Yeah, well, the governor is trying his best, being proactive, being uh, 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 proactive and reactive. Uh, but for me, uh, we must be careful not to certify crime, because when you certify crime, uh, the spirit of insecurity will uh, begin to emerge from all uh, crannies of our country, because people will believe that it is okay for you to commit crime and come back to government for negotiation. I agree with the stance Governor National El Rufai is taking, don't negotiate. hundred percent, because uh, negotiating with the enemy is a sign of weakness because before you negotiate with the enemy you must negotiate from the side of strength because each time you negotiate with the enemy you are telling them you are weak each time you negotiate with the enemy you are telling them that you have surrendered to their ill activities so we must be careful in negotiating with the enemies oh mr osaje what is your take on the pocket of violence that have found their way to the southwest from the farmers headers clashes to other crimes no matter the coloration that have found their way across the country. What's your take on that? Uh, Melinda, it's a worrisome situation. I, and uh, first of all, we need to look into deterrence mechanism, you know. Uh, if, we have a specific, if we have an effective deterrence mechanism in place, crime will not spread. The reason why crime has spread in from the east, west, south and north is because people, criminal elements are seeing uh, the vulnerability of our security agent. They are seeing the uh, loopholes of our security agent. They knew very well that our security agency have the uh, capacity to deal with this guy excessively, but I think there is a, a, an absent in political will. So uh, for me, if we look into a deterrence mechanism, we need to look into three structures. Uh, that is looking at the administration of criminal justice. We need to look into the police, we need to look into the courts, and we need to look into the prison. Uh, because when people commit crime without being punished effectively, uh, most other people think that, okay, it's good to commit crime because consequence, consequence is very essential because when somebody commits a crime and you make that person a scapegoat, it's going to pass a general uh, deterrence. That is why punishment comes in two forms, specific deterrence and general deterrence. 
Now we are suffering from general deterrence. Now look at the guys that are submitting their hands, uh, the pro uh, proposal from a Zamfara State governor. People feel, okay, yeah, Nigeria is a place you come and commit crimes. Check the government, you go back to negotiation. So now the reason why this crime has been migrating is because we are not taking a hold of our territorial reinforcement. You know what went wrong in uh, the capital? Uh, within a few days, the American government uh, sprang up and uh, projected high-powered force. That is what we call territorial reinforcement. We need more of territorial reinforcement in all our, our four border lines because if we don't carry out an effective territorial reinforcement, our security agency will definitely will be overwhelmed. Now, beyond territorial reinforcement, what other solutions do you think the government can explore to end insurgency and banditry? Thank you very much. I was born in Meduguri. I grew up in Sokoto State. I grew up in Zaria. Now, any child in the street is a potential threat to the society. Um, most of our leaders, most of the Natal leaders must be held accountable because of this uh, Almagiri uh, uh, School of 18 because you see most of these guys early in the morning, they are in the uh, dormant of most of these allies begging for bread, begging, begging, for, begging for butter. That is not a good way. We need to look into uh, education, three foundations, family foundation, educational foundation, and uh, uh, religious foundation. What are you telling me in the church from a religious point of view? What are you telling me about my Muslim brothers? What am I telling you about my Christian brothers? Religious foundation plays a very big role in bridging peace between uh, our great nation. Then educational foundation is very essential. And that is why um, the reason why this Fulani husband has been carrying out most of these ill activities is because of long-time neglect. Living in the bush without being cared for, without modernization. They need to look into educational foundation and finally family. Don't bring up a child you know you cannot take good care of. Government must look into parental absenteeism so that we'll be able to contain our dispute of criminal activities. Great. I think that's a good way to end this conversation. Mr. Dixon Osage, security consultant, a pleasure sharing your thoughts with us on the program. Thank you, Melinda. Nice to be here.